Oh god. <laughs> you okay? What's happening? <laughs> Tom, are you alive? And welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. I am joined here by Tom Webster. Hey! And Josh Beatty again. Hello! What is up, gentlemen? I went to a ramen place. Like, a legit ramen place. Like, there was a, a piece of meat and eggs and noodles and shit and a big <laughs> bowl of broth. Oh, that sounds oh my wonderful. God, it, was, it was really good. Uh, except that, I guess... I need to realign my perspective because I live in Seattle now. So right. I, I thought this place was like the fucking bomb. And I left. <laughs> I looked on Google Maps. It's got like two and a half stars. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta Apparently, get with it's it. a really shit ramen place. <laughs> That's awesome, though, because so you, you know like, that. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was so good. It was great. And then I went to like uh, this place. That's sort of like Chipotle, but for stir fry. And it was OK. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't eleven dollars. OK, but it yeah. was OK. Nice. Starting the food cast early, I see. <laughs> yeah, just yes, right, yes. In, right into get, the food cast. I did get mokta flavored Pocky, which I guess is like tea Mokta? mixed with oh. something that's green. Oh, mokta, like uh, like that. Yes, is that right? exactly oh, like that. I thought, was, I thought it <laughs> was matcha because I'm American. <laughs> uh, whatever it is, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. Remember, I haven't lived in Seattle long enough to pronounce things correctly. Yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. The hipsters will correct you, I assure you. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, they will. You will be Don't you dare sure. say Quinoa. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure if, like, a man that runs up to me and corrects my pronunciation is a hipster, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. making, like, $150,000 a year, or if he's a homeless dude making three. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, it is you Seattle. Can, you can find out if you go into a Starbucks and ask for a large. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I did that the other day. I got I got looks. And I was like, oh, shit. My bad. I think they call Sorry. that social suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, am, I am just not part of this crowd. Nice. So before we get too far, I feel like I should explain and simultaneously apologize to our, our usual host, Eric Fine. Who is on I apologize for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he is on vacation and will be back with us, I believe, next week. So, so that's one of the reasons Josh was filling in. Uh, he's not dead. We did not fire him. And we <laughs> kind of failed to clarify that the last cast, and I feel kind of bad. But uh, he will be back. Definitely. So, well, have I you guys gotten time to do much gaming this week? Have. A bit. A bit? A bit. Just a bit. Who wants to start us off? All right, so I got I got the Nintendo Switch last week. Yes, um, we saw you make so love I've, to it on cast. <laughs> yes, oh yes, I, I made sweet, sweet Nintendo-based love, which basically means it was kind of some heavy petting and some googly eyes, but anything that I, would warrant a teen rating I saw some had tongue to be dialed action. down. I saw some tongue good. action, though. Yeah, but you can't go farther than that. It has yeah, to be, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. teen rating is like the absolute max you can get on the Switch. You can't get anything else. So I uh, I jumped into Breath of the Wild, uh, and I've been playing a shit ton of that. Mm. I cannot find anything I don't like about the game That's other good. than I get my ass kicked constantly. Really? Is it? A diff <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's good. Especially for a, for a Zelda game. Like um, in earlier games, you know, as long as you avoid people and run past them, you you're generally guaranteed to not die a lot. Um, yeah. In this game, I'm getting one-shotted. The fucking world hates me. Like, <laughs> nice. I'll climb a mountain, and Link will be, like, shivering and shit and dying. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, just pull up your skirt, man. I gave you, like, <laughs> some shoes. What else do you want? <laughs> and, some and, shoes. <laughs> yeah. He'll freeze to death on the side of a mountain, holding on for dear life, trying to cling to the warmth of the earth. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult game. Uh, That's so. I was yeah, kind of surprised of when that. you said that the old games weren't that difficult because I remember playing A Link to the Past and like wow. I got so stuck I stopped playing it and never started playing again. <laughs> uh, Link to the Past is kind of the last of the challenging Zelda games. Uh, everything beyond that, uh, well I'll, I'll say anything beyond Link's Awakening because Link's Awakening had some difficult parts. Uh, you know, starting with Ocarina of Time and then going forward, the games just got almost criminally easy uh, mm -hmm. when it came to combat. Um, not that there weren't difficult parts, right? There's the shining moment of seeing Dark Link in Ocarina of Time, and there's there's a few boss battles that are actually 
hard to pull off uh, Mm -hmm. until you get used to them. But nothing that would... There's no fear that permeates the game of, oh, shit, I should probably avoid this combat encounter. Usually in Zelda, you you get pissed, you run in, and you slash a bunch of stuff, and you're done. (laughs) In this, I find myself actually avoiding combat in this Zelda game. A, Hmm. because, you know, I'm on this giant journey from, you know, halfway across Hyrule to get either a shrine or a tower, some sort of warp point, so I can get back there if I need to. And I've got... I've got one steak, some uncooked mushrooms, a sword that's half broken, six arrows, and <laughs> I'm freezing to death on top of a mountain. And then there's four enemies. I'm like, I, I can't do this. I cannot nice. afford to waste <laughs> these valuable supplies taking on these enemies. So it actually, it does make you think about your situation a lot. I, I like that a lot in games. Yeah. And this, that's specifically yeah. why I, I tend to like horror and um, like survival games. It's because there's those moments of dire decision making can you afford to do this or that or should you wait right yeah that's what what really brought me into like dark souls is like you have to deal with your enemies like you can't you can't just like oh cool guy oh cool guy it's just like okay well there's a guy in front of me what do i do how do i what's the best approach to this situation you know that's great that's that's what you want in a game Mm -hmm. that's what you want exactly yeah, so with with Zelda, um, there's definitely a right way, and there's not really a wrong way to approach a situation. There's ways that'll make the game way harder than it should be. Like, you know, charging into a group full of enemies in the middle of their encampment. Okay, you can do that. It's going to be fucking difficult, and you're going to hate yourself afterwards, but you can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, or... You can do what I did, and you sit, you know, kind of, kind of hunched below, a, you know, right behind a rock, and you pick up bombs, and you just chuck a bomb, and then you blow it up because they're remote bombs. So you just blow up the guys, and they're like, "What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? It's raining bombs." Mm-hmm. And you move to another spot, and then you chuck another bomb, and then they investigate. They're like, "What the fuck is this? It's glowing!" And then you blow them up again, <laughs> and you do this like a hundred and twenty times, and then finally you've <laughs> killed the guy. Tom, that sounds like the sissy approach. Yeah, that sounds oh, pretty, that it sounds pretty oh, passive. Passive there was, <laughs> there was a shrine battle with like this mini boss thing, and I, I ran out of swords, I ran out of arrows, I ran out of shields, I ran out of everything. I had mm-hmm. nothing left to defeat this guy. So I literally ran and dodged everything and then threw a bomb at him, which took a, like a pixel of his health at a time. I did that for 30 minutes. Wow. Um, Damn. Yeah, <laughs> That's some it, it commitment. Worked. It worked, though. Uh, and that's the thing. No, At no time in Breath of the Wild have I felt truly stuck. Like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I fucked this up and there's no way I can complete this. It's always been a, oh shit, I fucked this up, now it's hard mode. Yeah, right. um, nice. Which, it, it does It does the you know Metal Gear Solid thing on harder difficulties, which is, fuck, I got caught, now I'm really going to have to up my game to get myself out of this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or reload was what i did <laughs> I, was, I was just super ocd about uh about the stealth uh, uh aspect of middle gear so i was yeah. like oh no nah, i'm not gonna shoot anybody i'm out of here <laughs> especially if you're masochistic enough to play on what is a european extreme yes <laughs> or if you get seen it's over the game over Oh, that's I, awesome. I never did oh, that God. actually those, when, those when i played great. when i played the most metal gear solid i was oh god what year did that game come out when did the first one come out like oh i will look that up 2002 or something somewhere in that general vicinity but uh yeah i, I couldn't tell you i was you know a kid at that 1998. time 1998 wow Damn. okay so i was eight years old when that game came out <laughs> um <laughs> i think i got it probably i don't think it was that long after it released so i played it pretty early on and right. I, th- I beat that game probably 15 times on easy <laughs> Because <laughs> I was a kid, and I, that's just what I wanted to do. Oh man, I never actually owned the original Metal Gear Solid. I mm. played. Uh, you know how they used to send out demo discs and yeah. stuff on yeah. the, in those yeah. magazines. That's when I first played it. Yeah, that's what I played it on. That's all I played it on. I nice. played the demo like fifty times, and then I finally got Sons of Liberty, which is the one I played. There, that's Metal Gear Two, two. right? Yeah, two. yes, that one I played and I beat, and it was great. So I that actually, was the first I started... one I actually played. I started with Sons of Liberty, um, mm. but that's an odd place it, it to start. Was, that's where it, I started. It was too, great. Yeah. Um, it was good, yeah. But 
I, I then got uh, Twin Snakes on the GameCube, mm. which was amazing. It's Metal Gear Solid 1, beautiful graphics uh, built in, I believe, a similar or the same engine to Metal Gear Solid 2. So it's got all the nice yeah. physics stuff to yeah. it. Um, by far, though, my favorite game was MGS 3. 3 was, was so good. 3 was excellent. 3 was really well, that's good. That's the one where he was, uh, where you were Snake and you were in the, like, I don't know, forest for the most part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're in the, the forest the of Russia. Yeah, I played that one. That one was really good. I enjoyed that one. I guess mm-hmm. there's a little bit of nostalgia that was left for me for the other one, like being on the oil rig and stuff. Yeah. Or whatever it was that you were on. Honestly, yeah. that oil, oil rig part was my favorite part of that game. The yeah. First segment. Same. It got like. Yeah, it was great. Bad shit crazy at the end, though. Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Yeah. Yes, like it did. That, that, yeah, that's that's it, why it, I like the first one more story wise, and why the third one is probably the peak because it 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 got away a little bit from that. Like it was still <laughs> pretty crazy because it it's was, still a Kojima the game. The storylines, the storylines border on like Square Enix level yeah, of confusion. Yeah, like yeah. I, I still don't know who anyone is related <laughs> to. I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, okay, it's impossible. Adam. To, to say, you know, I like Metal Gear Solid 1 because the story was more grounded, that game had a literal ninja. Well, it had yeah. a psychic that would read your memory it card. <laughs> it had a shaman that turned into crows. Yes. And then but... it had a an almost topless female sniper that was like, oh. that could talk to dogs. Yeah. Yeah, you can't beat that, right? Just like right. that last but one. That was <laughs> tame for, that was ta- <laughs> that was tame for the series. It and it was just tame enough not to be too wild for me <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of, uh, of you listening that have never played a Metal Gear Solid game that is tame cool. for the series yes. right? you, you get ninjas and, and ancient shamans that can turn into ravens and uh, it's, it's fucking Metal Gear Yep. Uh, but I, I didn't just play Breath of the Wild uh, although it feels like that some days um, <laughs> I did play um, a Bomberman R uh, a little bit more um, and it's it's not bad it's not good by any means i don't mm-hmm. see myself playing a whole lot of it unless i want to play multiplayer bomberman against computers um but it will be a fun party game uh, especially with that patch that fixed some stuff played a little bit more, more lee chess uh keep getting my ass kicked um <laughs> i have started jumping into binding of isaac and yes. I, I have almost beat it i got to mom and she uh, kicked my ass you didn't almost uh, beat it uh tom but i get oh, what you're saying damn it. <laughs> well okay <laughs> let's I don't know how much I, uh, this is a spoiler, <laughs> but yes, beating a mom is beating it the first time you beat mom. Okay. Then there is much more after that later on once you unlock more things. But sick, yeah. I, I am saying. loving the daily run uh, because for nice. some reason it it seems like, and I guess it's because I get different characters in the daily run. It seems like um, I don't want to say they're better thought out because they are they're still random. Uh-huh. Um, but more interesting stuff happens in the daily run than it does when I'm just playing hmm. uh, a standard one. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's because they handpick the seeds. Uh, I, I'm not sure I if don't it's just because... Do. I don't think they do either. Because that would be ridiculous if they right. sat there and said, okay, yeah. what seeds are going to be good for this day? <laughs> um, but... Uh, definitely more interesting stuff happens. I like it. I love that I can, especially with the Switch being portable, yeah. I can fire up Isaac when I've got 10 minutes to blow mm-hmm. and stop wherever, shut the game off, and then can pick it right back up where it, where it left off. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are the kind of games that are going to be the best on the Switch. Uh, with definitely. Zelda, I have to sit down. There's a time yeah, commitment. Take it in. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've got to sit down for at least an hour. And do something productive in the game. With mm-hmm. Isaac, if I clear a couple rooms, you know, I've done something. I've gotten somewhere. But right. it's got that mobile game thing of where I can pick it up and put it down. Right. Yeah, that's uh, so one that's, of the beautiful things about nice. Rebirth because the the first game, the Flash version, did not have that. You had to do the whole run in one sitting or you Ooh. lost it. Yeah. Yeah. That no. was probably the best feature yeah. they added to that. But that's, um, awesome. that's, that's I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying that game because that, that game holds a special place in my heart and <laughs> I've played a lot of that and I'm going to be wanting to play that when I uh, do that RLCS trip. I'm going to be on the plane a lot and I'm going to be mad <laughs> that I don't own a Switch yet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing I'm really looking forward to. Um, so in, in personal news, uh, I got an apartment today, a permanent nice. apartment. So yes. this view yeah, behind me will change good. eventually. Um, I saw those but, pictures. It looks nice. Yeah, that also means um, 
I'll have like a roughly hour bus ride into work every day because apparently public transit exists in real cities, uh, not in Ohio. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be taking a bus into work, which means I've got an hour to sit there and play whatever I want. So if I wanted to roll Isaac on the bus for an hour every day, I could. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool. I'm really That's looking cool, forward yeah. to using the Switch actually portable every day. So if you don't use the bus, how long does it take you to get to work? Uh, it depends on when I leave. If okay. I leave at you know six in the morning, six thirty in the morning, it could take me thirty minutes to get to work. Um, if I leave at you know seven thirty to eight ish, nine ish, it could take me an hour and twenty to get in, Ooh, depending nice. on traffic. That's great. Yeah. That's about what my commute was. I actually played most of my Super Nintendo games uh, on my phone uh, on my commute to uh, to work. Because I have a Super Nintendo emulator for my phone, I have like 800 Super Nintendo games on my phone because <laughs> they're so small, and it's it's great. Yeah, so enjoy that, enjoy that trip. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, one thing that uh, I do want to cover is I have played a metric fuck ton of Mario Kart 8. Uh, I'm sorry, nice. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, and it is absolutely the best Mario Kart I've ever played. Um, nice. For a, a bunch of different reasons. Um, originally, when when I tried out Battle Mode, I was like, okay, this is cool. You kill people, there's balloons. I never understood why it didn't work like the N64. In the N64, you get three hits, and you're out. And you have to watch everyone else play. Well, that, that sucks for the people that get out. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's Mario Kart, right? So, I don't want to say there's no skill involved, but... Your four-year-old little sister can absolutely kick your ass up and down the street <laughs> playing Mario Kart. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing, you can get your shit wrecked. Um, and if you're online, uh, and online is actually a pretty big component of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, if you're online, you get your ass kicked in battle mode, and you're sitting there and waiting and watching everyone play, that that sucks. That right. absolutely sucks. Uh, so instead, they said, okay, if you die, if you lose all five of your balloons, we're going to cut your score in half and drop you back in. Which is great, because okay. you can keep playing, but it still punishes you for death. Um, and you all can right. also do all the online stuff, co-op, like split-screen co-op on your couch. Right, yeah, I played, is it um, still just two players, or can you do four on your couch? I, I see four in the menu, but I haven't tried it, because I don't have enough human bodies here. Oh, and when the bunnies we, we... are very uninterested in Switch controllers. Right, me and my friend, uh, my friends were really into Mario Kart on the Wii, on the Wii U, and we played it a bunch and mm-hmm. there is a ton of crazy stuff you can get into like there's like weird metas like uh it, like with with your uh drifting you can drift and then go back and forth like this and if you jump side to side to side to side you maintain your velocity so like you can hit your drift and then hit your boost and then in the straightaway you go like bop, 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 bop. And it's called like what is it called flame hopping Huh, something like fi- okay. fire hop fire hopping something like that and it's insane if you watch any of the ghost runs of the speed runs of people that <laughs> hold like the crazy records they're just uh-huh. fire hopping everything like through corners everything it's insane that's crazy so, <laughs> yeah that's so really there crazy. is meta there is meta to uh to something simple as mario kart 8 <laughs> nice. oh there's absolutely meta one thing i really really hope doesn't happen and i haven't seen it yet online uh is uh mario kart on the ds was awesome it was fantastic uh one of the best mario kart games ever released but um there was this thing called snaking where you could you know uh do your back and forth power slide to boost but you would back and forth power slide through the whole course just because of the way most of the courses were built Mm -hmm. and that unless you were snaking you would lose is how Mm -hmm. online worked in that game which means the vast majority of people unless you got good at that technique just couldn't play online um Mm -hmm. i played a you know about a week of online play before i just dropped it forever because there's no point in playing anymore i wasn't gonna learn to snake yeah i wasn't gonna put that much effort into being a pro mario kart player uh so i dropped it um i haven't seen anything like that anything breaking happen on the switch yet but it's the switch and there aren't enough to sell right now so we'll see what happens when it hits critical mass yeah um I ran a few split screen Grand Prix's, uh, and it's just great. The maps, mm-hmm. the music, the carts, the unlockables, everything is just, it's pure Mario Kart joy. Mm. Uh, so if you get a switch, absolutely pick this up. It is a must have. Absolutely. Nice. It's definitely. And my it, nice. it seems, 
It does seem to use a very small amount of battery life. I ran uh, a full Grand Prix, and I think I used 6% battery life today. For how much time, did you say? Um, A a full Grand Prix, so full four races, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes around there. So not a huge amount of time, but compared to something like Zelda, where you get two, two and a half hours to play it, Mm -hmm. you could probably play Mario Kart for a good four or five. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, and there are cheap batteries for the Switch now. So I do have one. It works well. Um, if anyone's nice. interested, I can shoot you the, the link on Amazon. Um, but it was like 40, 50 bucks for a battery. It comes with a USB C cable, charges the nice. Switch fast enough. It works great. That's um, good. So, if, nice. yeah. If, nice. if you want to play a whole shit ton of Zelda, you can now. That's oh, awesome. fantastic. That's Does so it good. work off battery backups? So, like, uh, I have a little, little battery, little battery backup APC thing. Um, kind of looks like a hard drive does it work off of that yes yeah so that oh, thing uh, fantastic it, it, yeah it pulls it like it would pull ac power uh but it also charges a switch at the same time kind of like if you were plugging that's it great. in. that's great that's yeah, great and it, it does it until you know the battery is fully drained um but it's it's awesome uh, that's really cool the only thing i'm missing right now and i'll have to report back later i'm on the hunt i need a switch case that holds all of this, holds Joy-Cons, holds a battery, holds a Switch, (laughs) holds games, but one that I can actually flip up and play the Switch still in the case without having trouble with it. That'd That'd be be kind of cool. I really want one, and I know they exist uh, because I had one for my Game Boy Pocket 20 years ago. Yeah, Um, yeah. It, it was the <laughs> yeah. best case ever, uh, but I really want one for the Switch because I hate having to dig all this shit out and put it all back in. I just want right. to flip the top and be done. When, when right. you so. said there was one accessory you needed for the Switch, I was waiting for the giant magnifying glass with flashlights attached. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, there is that too. And I really want something to snap onto the sides of the Joy-Cons to add like really extraneous big buttons on the side. Yes, yeah, 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 I need perfect. something like that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, magnifying glass, absolute must. <laughs> so that is the, that's the only stuff I've been playing. Nice. Nice. What about you, Josh? What have you been playing? Um, well, I've been playing the usual, the uh-huh. Rocket Leagues and Battlegrounds. Um, but what I've been what I have is a PlayStation Plus. I don't know if anybody else has that, but uh PlayStation Plus gives you free games every once in a while. Yeah. So I tried out a few that um, that were free. I tried out Abzu. I oh, hope I'm I was saying curious that right. about that. How yes, was that? it was really weird. So yeah. there's like nothing really after you. You're just kind of uh-huh. existing in this aquatic universe, a little mm-hmm. aquatic world, and you're swimming around, and you just kind of go through. You're just swimming. Uh, I can't quite figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, you swim around, and you go level to level. There's no like challenge. Right. You go in, you meditate, and you look at fish. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's <laughs> uh, it, it's neat. It's definitely neat, but it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a bit it's a bit bland right now for me. I'm getting yeah. through it, but it's not. It's nothing. I don't know. There's not a lot there. I did try another one called Typewriter, which is pretty interesting. It's uh, you play as like two little dots, and you navigate like a physics-driven environment. Which is quite cool. Nice. So uh, no, I, I apologize, audio listeners. We're having some some slight technical issues with our video right now, <laughs> so we're trying to figure that out while we're talking games. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great. It's it's a little pretentious uh, mm-hmm. at times. It, it it seems to go through like the history of how these fonts were created, mm-hmm. which is, and then so each one, each like world. Uh, just has the history of the font as you unlock it throughout the thing. It's really strange, but the physics puzzles are are, are really fun and and really good. Um, the other one I tried, which I actually really like the concept of, and if anybody is interested, should probably try and pick it up. Called uh, Laser Disco Defenders. It's really interesting. It's a lot like a bullet hell. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a bullet hell shooter, but every bullet you shoot stays oh so nice wow, so you weird. right so you shoot uh and so like a, a thing will bounce off the wall and come back at you and kill you huh so so like weird. you 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 want to just sit there and spam all the shots right but 
when you spam your shots, you just get annihilated. Uh-huh. So you have to make sure that you're um, you have to make sure that you're all lined up, and then you take your shots accurately. And it's really cool. And the power ups are really simple, and they're a lot of fun. Um, make smaller lasers, make big one one big laser sword. It's 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 really simple and a lot of and, and a lot of fun to get through. I'm gonna keep playing it and see how it goes. It nice. seems like it's a little samey as mm-hmm. you go through the levels, but that may just be because I didn't get in it too far. It sounds interesting. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting. It was definitely fun. It, it's it's a cool take on a bullet hell where like you know you're the, your biggest enemy, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> yeah, at one absolutely. point you're like you're sitting there dodging through all of your bullets and everything, and it is it is a nightmare. Um, I love how that that one little twist on on a genre that we've seen for you know twenty thirty years right. just completely <laughs> changes the whole game. Right, yeah. it really does, and the enemy's bullets stay. So, like, if an enemy sh- an enemy okay. shoots a bullet, it bounces around too. But the enemies shoot a lot slower than you. This and one we- and man discovers one weird trick to revive <laughs> shmup genre. And <laughs> hates him. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, I've been playing that, playing Rocket League, getting geared up for our uh, RLCS trip. Yes, which so ready. I, I'm excited I, for that. I have a little something. Oh, for our RLCS trip. Ooh. Oh, oh my. there it shoot. is. There it is. Nice. Yes. That's uh, so cool. Some official 72 pin connector t-shirts for the crew. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's something that eventually we get more uh, more viewers or more people interested we can sell yes. but yes. we can we yes, can we definitely can. open a, open up a store. The um the shirt uh, is saved all the they have it they keep it mm-hmm. so we can order like a crate of them or something nice and we'll then sell them for you know whatever we'll is open up a banana stand i know right. you know, we'll, 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 we'll sell the shirts and then we'll sell <laughs> copies of dark souls rocket league and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we'll also cook food well we can sell mugs i think we should sell mugs just because mugs like, would be I would, great. My, <laughs> if i had a 72 pc mug it'd be perfect i, I drink so I, much tea and coffee I, I, I would use it all the time <laughs> I, would, I would love like a glass that way i could be like just, mm, wow this drink in my hold on here this drink in my glass is so good right now with our logo on it yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. insert, insert logo it tastes better there. with this glass <laughs> Yeah. Right. I feel so informed on video games and video game related <laughs> topics. <Yeah. laughs> mm, I feel like listening to a one hour rant about Tom and Doom 2016. Yes. <laughs> well, that's yes. that's really it for me. I mean, I I kind of burned through a few games. Oh no, there's one more. Okay, and it's it's not as exciting as some of the other ones. But I I recently downloaded uh, Animation Throwdown: The Quest for Cards. What um, is that? That is essentially baby's first winner first of the 2017 <laughs> worst game name of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. So what it is, is it takes like, I don't know. Is that Fox now with family guy, uh, King of the Hill and all of those. Yes. Right. Yes. So, um, Oh yeah. Good point. Dad pads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is absolutely witty. Um, <laughs> So Whitney had this fantastic. Whitney is my wife, by the way, for viewers that don't know. Um, she had this fantastic idea that uh, a- uh, Adam should go to RLCS with pads, butt pads that you can, you know, sit and set down on the seat, and they kind of set up your <laughs> connect your logos on it, and they'd be called dad pads. And the best thing about that is is twofold. One, Adam's name, as most of you know, is Datum in uh, on Steam, and the other is the fact that that's such a dad thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> to bring, to bring, to bring, to bring your, own, your own butt pad with you for the uncomfortable chairs. So hold on. Can you have 72 PC branded dad pads? Of course. Yeah, you can have absolutely. 70, yeah, you can we absolutely that. do that. Yeah, we can make that happen. <laughs> I, actually, I need to build a logo for 72 food connector so we can have food connector yeah. like on the front oh, yeah. and 72 PC on the back. You know what you should nice. do, though, is never, ever cast a 72 food connector. You just take excerpts from these podcasts that yeah. have food, yes. and then you we slice have, them into a YouTube channel. We have enough content. <laughs> we have enough food content on this cast to do that. <laughs> that's the sad right. part. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. So, I sorry. So I got sad, sidetracked no, that's about that. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so the, uh, the animation throwdown quest for cards is, uh, I guess it's Fox. Who does, is that Fox now that does uh, Family Guy? I think so. Um, 
So they do Family Guy, Bob's Burger, Bob's Burgers, all those. So anyway, mm. it has all those. King of the Hill, Futurama. Those are all um, decks that you can play instead of like you know your mage, your uh, warlock, shaman, etc. From yeah. like a Hearthstone, um, and then you just do card battles, and it's just it's really simple, mm-hmm. and they kind of like hold your hand through the little tutorial and it's fine. But right after you get done with that, they, they like use up all of your coins for each thing. So like you have a coin for uh, buying a pack. They're like, Oh, you should buy a pack. And you see a one grade out next to it that you really want, mm-hmm. but like you can't buy it. So like you have to buy that one and it uses all of your coins and then you, <laughs> you're, you're screwed. So you can't like go and do that one. So then you have to buy like with real money, buy coins. And then they have another thing that, yeah, you can speed up the time for like fusing cards together. It's it's mm-hmm. it turned into a big pay to win, right? And it, it's not really worth it. It's it's okay because it's free to play currently, mm-hmm. but it's just it's just back to that like pay to win where they yeah. bait you in with an okay a f- a concept free, and free to play and integrating pay to win concepts to make money. I, it's That's the first crazy. time I've, I've ever seen it. That. That's Fox the only. It's the first time I've ever seen it. That's why yeah. I'm bringing it up. I feel like the world should know. Yeah. That this <laughs> this kind of can happen. <laughs> this can happen. So we need to be careful. <laughs> Otherwise, there'll be a landslide and people won't be finishing games next time. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so, yeah, so, someday, if, if we let this go any further, someday <laughs> they could have early access games that don't actually finish. Whoa. Yeah. Guys, I've After got a they've gotten money from people company. already? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> and game complete company, Games Inc. The, the 72 pin. <laughs> And we're not even going to finish it. We'll just call it 72 pin. Not the 72 pin <laughs> game. <laughs> not connector. Just to 72 dot, dot, pin. Dot. Yeah. If we're going to release early access games that get kickstarted, that don't have endings or writers. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the only thing we're going to do is have pixel art and we'll sort of emulate Dark Souls. There you go, AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> I mentioned Dark Souls for you. You can drink this is now. Good. Sorry you to keep you waiting. Now. Yes. We used to, uh, <laughs> in, in high school, we used to have a, uh, a group that did art for various things. And we used mm-hmm. to be called United Artists 4. And then it had ellipsis right after it's all dot, dot, dot. And then the, the <laughs> slogan was, we're working on it. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's, good. That's really good. And, and on a more serious note, um, yes. for those of you waiting for my Dark Souls 2 full review, uh, I will have my gaming PC back as soon as the movers get it out of storage. And I will absolutely get back to talking about Dark Souls every single podcast. Of course. <laughs> That's nice. awesome. Well, that's it for my games. Uh, Adam, what have you been playing? I have been playing the usual Rocket League and Battlegrounds. Having a lot <laughs> of fun, as usual. This need not mention, but you can drink now, if those listening. <laughs> um, so, earlier, I was talking about how I wish I had a Switch for that RLCS trip, because I'm going to be on the planes a lot and stuff like that. But mm. I have a Game Boy SP that my oh, stepsister yes. gave me three or four years ago. And I haven't really touched it since then. And she didn't have a charger for it. Mm -hmm. But today, I turned that sucker on, and it worked. And it has a green battery life. It has a green battery light on it, and I'm going to see how long that lasts me on the plane. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So, I don't... The only thing is, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of good um, Game Boy Advance games. I have a few. Actually, do you you have Metro Fusion? No, I wish I did because that's what I would be oh. playing. No, it was All weird right, because I got we'll... these friends. I got the, some games from it from a friend who didn't have one anymore. I've got like six Mega Man Battle Network games, and then like <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, Boo's Fury, um, and then I've got Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Final Fantasy One and Two, and that's it. That's 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 not bad. Okay, so when you come here, cause mm-hmm. if you if most of you know, some of you don't know. Uh, Adam's going to be coming here, and then we're road tripping down to RLCS, which is going to be great. Um, but when you come here, we're going to go to a magical place called Phoenix Games. Phoenix and it has, Games. It's, it's, it is a game store in our town that sells only retro games. Nice. Nice. We've had and a similar all, place around here. And Actually, it, a buddy of ours huge, works there. It's huge. They have a ton of stuff, and we'll yeah. wander around there and check it out. Definitely. I, that, that I, sounds I think awesome. Like that. that sounds really yes. cool. We'll get you some more Game Boy Advance games yeah. for your trip back. <laughs> nice, yes. If the battery lasts that long, maybe I'll buy a charger there. That'd be good. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, as for Cool Bivens, they moved and expanded since you've been gone. They are oh, much larger. Nice. So, uh, Bivens used to live up here. Um, and uh, at that time, they were in a very small little kind of hole in the wall. But mm-hmm. now they own like a big thing because there's, you know, all the nerds are older now. <laughs> so, yeah. so, old so we're like, we we're like, what happens? Old nerds. <laughs> old nerds. <laughs> right. But um, no. so yeah, I, I fired that up. Surprisingly, four-year-old battery, still green light. That's incredible. That's really I, I really expected just nothing to happen when I flipped the switch. So technically, I played about fifteen seconds of Mega Man Battle Network today, and then <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but mainly, I finally finished Resident Evil Seven yesterday. Yes, well yes. done. And, and I didn't. I didn't even want to play it yesterday. I'm just like, you know what? I need to just get this over with. Uh, I can talk about <laughs> it on the cast because I haven't played anything else this week. Noteworthy. So, so I finally just started it up and played it. Once I got into it, I actually enjoyed the last bit of it. Nice, but, uh, man. That's such a great game. That's a really, That's cool. really good game. For them to take a franchise that has ran itself into the ground and got sidetracked from what made it great in the first place, and they finally brought it back to something that's good, it's, it's really mm-hmm. nice to see that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too scary. Too scary? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty scary, I gotta tell you. There's, there's some parts in that, and most of those parts are, sadly, in like the first half. It gets a little... I don't know how to describe it probably describe it as resident evil because the series is probably known for this but it gets kind of extravagant at parts with big monstery things and stuff without um, getting too far into the spoilers i just remember seeing a I, giant crocodile and like screenshots for resident evil 4 or something right i mean they have some pretty crazy stuff mm-hmm. in in them for sure the mm-hmm. older ones were a little more tame you're just like dealing with zombies and then nemesis yeah, yeah. which is actually pretty strange and i'll probably talk about that uh later on in a later portion of this mm-hmm. but uh how like i used to be really into horror games and now mm-hmm. i just can't do any horror games at yeah all. i just I cannot do yeah. it uh, this one is really so. good especially because they kind of built it for psvr too so oh the, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah the first person thing helps a lot the first half of the game is really good. There's a lot of 80s slasher horror, you know, mm-hmm. redneck town down on the bayou that are right. eating people <laughs> and terrorizing you. Yeah. And it's very, very scary in those portions of the game. And then you've got the molded, which is the monstery creatures that are also in that thing. And towards the later part of the game, that's your main enemy. And after a while, you're like, oh, okay. I've seen these a million times. They're not that scary anymore, more than they are just like startling uh, and like trying not to die. Right, right. So it, it's still very, very tense. Um, I liked having combat. I've played so many horror games lately where you couldn't fight at all. It was so nice to actually have a combat mechanic in the game. Mm-hmm. And they did it in a way where you still don't feel too powerful. You still feel vulnerable. It's really cool. That's great. But yeah, until the very end of the game, you you feel very weak, and the game as a whole is great. It's it looks good, it sounds good. Um, in particular, the camera effects, like the depth of field effects, like you know you you start to peak. Really? Yeah, like it's very cinematic in a way. It feels like a movie. Hmm. You know, you've got you can see your hand, of course, with the gun or whatever on the right hand side, and as you peek around the corner you see that the gun is blurry and then what you're looking in the background becomes in focus and vice versa. It's just, just nice little things like that really add to it. It's great. So That's yes, awesome. finally I would, be there. I would expect, I would expect that, you know, the camera effects and stuff like that would, you know, like back in Metroid prime, they were really <laughs> awesome and it really <laughs> got you into the game. But, but now I'm just like, uh, oh, camera effects, lens flare. Jesus, come on. <laughs> G- give me a game I can actually look at, but it's good that they fit in there. Yeah, it's not so, it's not uh, overdone. It's not like lens flare crazy stuff, but okay. just it's it the game looks very gritty. Uh cinematic At least and gritty. In the demo, um you were a guy, you know, like actually filming. Mm-hmm. Um your your character, your main character isn't actually running around this haunted house trying to survive, still holding his video no, camera right this is and an a outlast. gun in front oh, of him. This is yeah. an outlast. <laughs> Okay. Right, okay. So there, there last, is a... you're literally holding the camera the whole game, and there's, right. a, there's, what the there's a button to toggle it, but there's no point in toggling it. Like it doesn't do anything for you. That's that's what oh, I really? never understood about, like especially movies like like Cloverfield or any mm-hmm. of the you know the 
shaky cam movies. It's, yeah. okay, you're running from a giant monster and or something's trying to kill you. Put the fucking GoPro down, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Right. Well, it yeah, made oh. sense for it made sense for Outlast because mm-hmm. I have, I saw a few reviews on it for Outlast. Uh, one is as you're trying to document this, yeah. going through Outlast. You're a journalist. That's why you have it up is that's your job is to bring everyone to justice. Like mm-hmm. you're supposed to go through there, experience what's going on, and bring all of this to the to the to the world. Right. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the second one that wasn't the case, and you're there's no reason to have the camera. So right. it's you, yeah. you lose it a bit there. <laughs> yeah, but, a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm too the, too scared to to do it. <laughs> so. yeah, the scariest thing that's happened in my job is I got called at three in the morning and someone said, "Oh my god, the switch went down. We have to restart all the servers." And I was like, "Oh shit, that's terrifying, right?" But if I if my job said, "Oh yeah, Tom, you should probably go to this creepy haunted mental hospital and you know like bring justice to all the people that were there." Here's your camera. Uh, and by the way, try not to die. I'd be like. I don't really need that job too much, right? <laughs> McDonald's is hiring. I can totally like you know. But make I mean, for like, hang on, we can we can make a horror movie out of this. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. hey, power's out. Oh, the switch went down. You need to go in there and turn yeah. it back on. You're like, sure, no big deal. <laughs> but but it was a big deal. Yes, <laughs> yeah. This summer, servers <laughs> down. Coming servers fall down. 2017. Yeah, it's on, it's on. <laughs> Oh yes, that would be great. I'm, I'm going to start writing my screenplay right now. I live. I live good. on the West Coast. I can write screenplays now. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can write I mean, them you in a, the coffee shop. You have shop. a switch, or, or do you have a laptop? Yes. Okay, perfect. Just go to any Starbucks, and you're officially yeah. yep. you're officially a perfect. writer. Yes. Well, do I have to? Do I have to like keep the trash beard in order yes. to write yes, the yes, screenplay? Absolutely. Trash beard yes, is absolutely. a necessity. Your hair needs to be at least like a, a, quite a few inches longer too. So Damn. just, just okay. ride that out. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait. Rune killer it does have to be a Mac. It can be a Eric, MacBook. Eric but is actually in chat. Tom, and he says it has to be a yeah. MacBook. Luckily, I, I do have a MacBook. You do for, have a MacBook, so, but you also so have yeah, Linux. Can, you also have Linux installed on everything, which oh, I think is yeah. even more hipster. Yeah, it totally <laughs> is. Okay, I'm going to use my Linux laptop. You should install Linux. All over install it. Linux on the MacBook is what you need to do. But yeah. We digress. <laughs> I need to cast Zoe Deschanel as someone. Yeah. That's everyone. She plays the server. Uh, no, because my, uh, <laughs> yes. it, okay. I did a film. Me, me and my wife, a couple of friends did a movie. We did mm. a zombie movie. Nice. Uh, and it never saw the light of day because it just, it, it, we lost it on the hard drive. We did it for a class oh, no. and that hard drive fried. So we never actually got to keep it, but we had our friend, John, uh, this goofy guy with no <laughs> acting ability whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. And he did Every single character, yes. every character in the whole oh thing. Oh my god, that's and, excellent! And it was amazing. The only people that were different were the zombies. Like we had different people <laughs> for all the zombies, but for like we had a hunter, we had uh, just like your average guy, and we mm-hmm. had like a Girl Scout, and we had <laughs> and he played everybody, and it was fantastic. <laughs> nice, that is that's wonderful. excellent. <laughs> So that's about all I've been playing, um, but we have a group topic this week. We and do. This is one I've been looking forward to. Our group topic is what brought you into gaming. We we've all been playing games a lot now. We're all pretty hardcore gamers for the most part. But how did that start for each of us? And who wants to start us off? How about you, Tom? You're a retro gamer. What, okay. what, what got what got you into video games, and how did that journey go for you? So I'd like for this, and I, I don't think this question has ever come up on any iteration of the podcast, um, mm-hmm. but I, I don't want this to be, you know, a, a sad doom and gloom story because that's, that's not <laughs> what 72 pin connector is about. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who don't know, I've actually got a lung disease and it forced me to be in the hospital for, you know, two to four weeks at a time to get, we call it getting tuned up. <laughs> uh, it's, I was born with it. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I spent a whole shit ton of time in the hospital as a kid. Mm-hmm. And my parents actually, you know, when mom found out she was pregnant, she's like, oh, she, he's not going to play all those evil video games. Those are the tools of the devil. Uh, <laughs> you know, just imagine the mother from Binding of Isaac. That was basically my mom. <laughs> oh, oh um, wow. Yeah, except really anti video game. Um, <laughs> But when, you know, you're a little kid stuck in a tiny hospital room for, you know, the vast majority of your early life, it's really shitty and you get really bored until the nurse rolls in the NES. So 
that's what I grew up on. That was my main form of entertainment. You know, mm-hmm. we had movies and shit, but you can only watch, you know, Lion King or whatever so many times before you want to jump out the window. Right. Uh, right. So she she brought in an NES, and I remember vividly my first experience with the video game was Bubble Bobble on the NES. Oh, uh, nice. Now, for those of you who haven't played Bubble Bobble, it's like this arcade ish thing. You're a tiny little cute dinosaur, and you jump up, and you blow bubbles at a baddie and capture them them and then jump on the bubbles to pop them and you win and it's got one musical track for the entire game oh god it plays on a loop oh that is it and i played hours and hours and hours of bubble bobble uh before my mom begged the nurse to find other video games on the floor (laughs) so that soundtrack Um, is just like permeated your skin hasn't it at this point i i get so happy whenever i hear that tune i could i accidentally listened to it for three hours uh, a couple weeks back it's like oh video game soundtrack oh i'll put on some bubble bobble and then Mm -hmm. like three hours later i was like wow this is still going on all right let's do this (laughs) that's crazy on stuff it's great Nice. That's crazy. That that's one. Um, that's one that my wife played all, all in the past, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize there was a final boss to that. Yes, yes, there is. There, that and is actually, insane. Bubble Bobble is fucking depressing because Bubble Bobble has multiple endings. If you do not have a friend, if you do not have a second player in the game when you beat the final boss, you get the lonely ending. Oh, what? No yes. way. Yes. No way. That's, that's brutal. brutal. That's such right? a well thought out concept that like now you play all these like phone apps and there's like it, it's infinite. You're never going to get to the end. And mm-hmm. Bubble Bobble had like a hundred plus level. Like there was a lot of yeah. levels, right? There was. And when you hit the when you hit the end and there's an actual like boss, it, it blew my mind because it was a long time later that she played that. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was past the phone games that she played it recently. Mm-hmm. That's 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 crazy. So yeah. I didn't expect there to be a boss. I was like, huh, totally blew my mind. So there's there's Bubble Bobble. Uh, I played early on Mario Kart. Um, Kirby was not out at the time, or maybe it was. I never played it in the hospital though. Uh, I did play a good bit of Metal Gear. I always sucked at it, and mm-hmm. I was running around punching things. I had no idea what I was doing, yeah. but I played the original Metal Gear on the NES, uh, which. Uh, looking back, it's the most inferior of all of the original Metal Gear ports out there, but mm-hmm. hey, it was my first experience with the stealth game, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I got my Mario Brothers on, which was fun. I also nice. got some Always. some Duck Hunt on. Um, but yeah, uh, then you know when uh, I got out of the hospital one trip, Dad totally caved. He took me to Toys R Us and he said, Tom, you can get whatever you want. And as a little kid, I... I banked it i just i used <laughs> my father's emotions against him and i said i want a blue balloon and a red balloon and a purple balloon and he's like oh shit son we can't afford that so he got me the mario 3 bundle of the nes nice. um, <laughs> and and it was all history after that nice, nice. that's very so cool. cool what about so you yeah, Adam? that's that's my tale of woe <laughs> um my first gaming experience i was you know, I don't even know the age, somewhere between three and five, somewhere like that, three, four, five. I'm um, going to my grandparents' house, and they had an NES. And I, I don't know why my grandpa had an NES, but he had an NES. And uh, probably, you know, Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, very much remember those. Um, he had, was it Tailspin? Is that is that the right name? I'm oh, wow, yeah. Yes. Tailspin was good. I like that. Uh, he had Top Gun. You know, he had this, he had oh, Zelda, God, he had the Legend of Zelda. I mean, it's just all these old NES games. And he, I would come over and he would kind of show me how to play them. And then I would play them. And every time I would go over there, that's all I wanted to do was go into the back room of his house and play this NES he had set up with the TV. And it was, it was so much fun. <laughs> so that was def- definitely my, my earliest experience with games and what, what got me started on early. Awesome. I'm so sorry you had to play Top Gun on the NES. It's by far one of the worst games ever created. It, yeah, well, I owned it. I owned when, it. It was awful. When you're a young child, every game is the best game ever. It's <laughs> true. It's true. Sort of. Sort yeah, of, but I sort didn't of. know. Intuitively at a young age, I didn't know I wasn't very good at Top Gun. Also, <laughs> I knew that the Ninja Turtles game, the first one on the NES that I had, was mm-hmm. terrible compared to the second one. Yeah. <laughs> So that's what got me started, Josh. What was what was uh, 
like the earliest uh, games you can think of that you got into for for me uh the one that definitely got me in the first one that i played that i was like this is video games it was um aladdin on the suit on the sega genesis nice that was the That's first one, one i played my my uncle um lived with my grandparents uh at the time and he had in his room he had like a little you know a little tiny tv with a sega genesis and he d- he was sitting there playing and i just kind of like sit over his shoulder and like watch him play and then at, mm-hmm. then at some point he, would, he actually like, let me play and i was like it blew my mind i was like this is so fun i played that and um and lion king which oh, was impossible God. by the, the way that uh lion yeah. king Jesus is, Christ. is hard. the ostrich level Impos- yeah it's just not possible that's at, that's at that time that is that I can't I believe they it. made. I it. couldn't do it, but that was like those. Those are my first two. Yeah, um, and that's and that's where it, what really got me into it. I can't believe they made a game from a kids movie that hard. <laughs> like what? Oh a, man, they did it on purpose. All of them they, were that they, way. They, they did yeah. that one in particular on purpose, and apparently they made it so they made it that hard because they were offering demos at the time, or mm. like. Uh, it was because of Blockbuster or something. They started selling games yeah. at the time and they wanted to make it so hard that you couldn't beat it in the rental time. And that monkey level was specifically designed to keep you from from finishing in the in that period of time. Oh my statistically, god. Statistically yeah. statistically you could not do that level uh in, in that period of time. Back in the day, um, the most controversial thing um, kind of plaguing the industry at the time was, you know, Blockbuster and rental shops like it because you could rent a game, take it home and never have to play it again. I played so many NES games because our, our Kroger, our grocery store at the time, had a tiny little video rental place in it that had video games. So every time we went grocery shopping, I rented a game for a couple bucks and I played a shit ton of NES games and beat a shit ton of NES games and I didn't buy a shit ton of NES games. And I wasn't <laughs> the only one like that. There were tons of people that just rented everything because why buy it, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to. Unless right. it's your favorite thing and you're going to play it every day, you don't need your own copy. Just get what you want out of it and leave it. Um, oh, man. I mean, they, it went so far as, like, Japan, uh, they actually have laws on the books that prevent video game rentals, so the rental stuff never happened in Japan because the government banned it. Whoa, uh, In America, crazy. it never did. So uh, even, even though the industry really tried to regulate rentals uh, to a wide margin... Yeah, I hmm. actually never rented a game. That's really? something. I, I've never rented a game. And the reason was is because the very first console I had was the PlayStation. This was my first console was the PlayStation 1. Uh-huh. And uh, my stepdad um, came and said uh, he had a friend and named, I think it was I think it was Raul, but it doesn't matter. Um, he came and he's like, oh, you have a PlayStation. That's great. Here's a gigantic stack of games. It was like this tall, full of games, just a shit ton of games. But they were all burned. I'm like, how do I play these games? Mm-hmm. And he gave me a little spring and this little disc. And what it did is it would boot up the disc, <laughs> yes. pop the drive, keep the disc spinning, stop the disc, and you'd swap it out for the burned game. Nice. <laughs> and so my first experience with like having games was piracy. That's <laughs> excellent and bad at the same time. <laughs> so I played like crazy wonderful. games. I played that- crazy games like Wish You Don't Blade and yeah. things that I, I never would have been able to get my hands on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I remember that little spring thing because yeah, right? I bought... Um, there were a couple of Dragon Ball Z games on PlayStation 1 and I was a huge fan of Dragon Ball Z at that time. And those games were only in Japan. So I bought them off eBay and you had to buy this um, kind of like, it's not a game shark, but it was kind of like a game shark that allowed you to play international games. Yeah, I had to plug into the adapter port and then I had to start the PlayStation and I had to pop the disc tray and then I had to switch out the discs for the Japanese game and I could play my Dragon Ball Z games. They were like fighting games and stuff. That's so great. That's so great. That's cool. That brings back memories. I actually forgot about that until you mentioned that. And I, <laughs> yeah, that I, was I like, love the the region free stuff. I, mm-hmm. I never really got the business decision behind regionalization anyway, um, mm-hmm. and that's 
That's why I love the Nintendo Switch, because everything is region free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of moving into like the modern era when mm-hmm. you really get into stuff like that. I'm sure there was some some serious like reason as yeah. far as like licensing. Uh-huh. And there's also you have to go. I don't know if the uh, if the rating system was in at that point. Mm-hmm. but I'm sure it had to go through some sort of ratings and right. customs of some sort. <laughs> it, it started, it was really, um, Sega tried, they built their own rating systems to kind of head off all the congressional hearings and basically the creation of the ESRB because they didn't want government regulation on video games because it's really bad for business if you're Sega. Mm-hmm. Nintendo, you're wholesome and you're like, yeah, whatever. You Regulate Mario. No one gives a shit, right? Right, uh, right. But Sega's putting out, you know, mortal fucking Thank combat you. and stuff. Yeah, right. Um, and, and it would really hurt Sega's business model. So they tried to create their own regulation around it. Um yeah, you know, luckily the industry said, "Okay, uh, we should probably make our own board instead of having the government come in and do this because right. we know they're going to fuck it up." Yeah, well, there you go. We have some information bombs on us. ESRB ESRB uh, came out in 1994. Says AOL instant message information. Oh. <laughs> September 16th, 1994, 20, 22 years ago. Holy shit! How do I know that? Oh, and, he knew that off the top of his head. Okay, that's incredible. Well done, AOL instant message. That's great. What a god. Rune Killer adds that Australia is one of the big reasons for region locking. Um, mm. Right, and I, I wouldn't say that necessarily they're the big reasons for region locking, but absolutely they're the reason and that localization and censorship teams um, mm-hmm. want to kill themselves every time a big release comes out. Uh, South Park and the Stick of Truth actually went so far as to put pictures of crying pandas in their game during cutscenes that couldn't legally be shown in Australia. Right. Wow. It's pretty funny. I mean, <laughs> Australia totally fucks with their games. It's one of the reasons why game piracy is so rampant out there is because yeah. when you buy a, an Aussie game, an Aussie version of a, a US-made game, you're not actually getting the real game you're getting something dumbed down and built with kid gloves i've, I've well, heard they did, that uh, doesn't germany do that too yes and a1 semester just pointed that out oh, too yeah well, um right, like, he, he points out that wolfenstein in germany was a huge point of contention oh, because yeah. nazi symbolism is absolutely illegal in germany so when its software had to put out anything like that they had to change all the symbols crazy hmm. i know that uh i remember for left for dead the australian version um had more guns in it because huh. they wanted to, they felt bad. They're like, Oh, you guys get to play a lesser <laughs> game. So they gave you the, the scout and the op from counter-strike nice. as well as, <laughs> as well as that knife that you get the knife too. From yeah. Counter-Strike. And you that's guys awesome. play that. that's and I'm like, I like that. But a that's lot. so cool though. And I'm really jealous in a way <laughs> yeah. because you get a bolt action <laughs> sniper rifle and left for dead. That sounds so fun, right? It sounds like a pain in the ass, yeah. but a lot of fun. And yeah. a knife, like how badass is that to go in with like a Rambo knife? <laughs> <You> know, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> so we've talked about how you know what what games did we first play that kind of got us introduced into the video gaming world? But what about the games that kind of shaped us as a gamer after that? What what kind of led you onto today? What was your 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 big highlight nostalgia games of your whole video gaming conquest? I hated every single video game I've ever played until Dark Souls. Oh, really? Perfect. Yes, yes, every <laughs> single one. Wow. Uh, no, no, but but really, um, <laughs> really, the the thing that shaped a lot of what I come to expect from games um, was a, a combination of things. Uh, Ocarina of Time taught me that games can have an air of mystery mm-hmm. around them. And sometimes sometimes it's it's what you perceive that's not actually in the game is more mm-hmm. important than the game itself. Uh, in yeah. Ocarina of Time, back, back in my day, <laughs> uh, there was this huge hunt for the Triforce when we were all experimenting with Game Shark codes or Game Shark. Yeah, it was Game Shark. It wasn't Game Genie. Game Shark codes and unlocking hidden beta test rooms and debug codes and pulling the game code apart line by line in, in ROMs, mm-hmm. um, trying to find hidden shit that people left in the game. And it was the mystery around what could this have been? What did they leave in? You know, what was the original vision for this game? The one that we didn't get. Mm-hmm. Um, and that taught me that sometimes the community around a game is more important than the game itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, another one, and, and probably more tangible, is Final Fantasy VII taught me that 
games don't have to be just fun and games, right? Mm-hmm. They can be cinematic epics that games can take you on a, a radical journey that you'll remember for the rest of your life because mm-hmm. you know the game made you angry or made you cry. It was it was beautiful and, and horrifying in all the right ways. Yeah. I love Final Fantasy VII because it finally showed that games can be more than you know Gradius or Pac-Man or Donkey right. Kong. Right? Yeah. They, they can actually have substance and feeling put into them. Even today I'd like to see people that aren't familiar with video games to be more exposed to games like that because you've got a lot of you know particularly the people that are like oh video game violence is causing murders and stuff right you know they when they think video games you know it's either pac-man or pong from back in the day or all the games now are just people shooting each other and stuff like it'll rot your brain (laughs) a lot of people don't even know puzzle games exist like they don't know that that's a thing or that a a game can be artsy or there's a big story maybe it's emotionally impactful like a lot of people don't even know those games really exist right I, i think i think one thing that actually has done more for gaming since it came out than anything else in the past 10 years, 15 years, Mm -hmm. uh, is Minecraft. Uh, And that's because it took the world by storm. People understood, holy shit, it's just digital Legos, and everyone fucking loves it, right? Games Mm -hmm. aren't about... Uh, you know, just killing people and ripping their spines out yeah. or, or, or Madden, right? It's yeah. something that you can create with. It's something that you can learn with uh, because yeah. Minecraft is being used in schools a lot to, to teach different things. Um, it, it really did a whole lot to sort of shape public perception, right? Mm-hmm. Non-gamer perception. My right. mom knows what Minecraft is, right? Yeah. I've never played Minecraft in front of my mother. No one has played Minecraft in front of my <laughs> mother. But she intuitively knows what it is because it's just become embedded in our culture. Mm-hmm. Right. That's cool, though. I like that. It, it really is. So what about what about you, Josh? What, um, what other games did you play, you know, later on in time that really shaped your gaming experiences? It, it actually kind of bleeds over into the other concept that we were, mm-hmm. we were going to get into, and that's it really changed. Um, when I first got into gaming, everything was a burner game because mm-hmm. again, I gave I was given that whole stack as right. I talked about previously, and like it's like oh this is good, throw it away. Oh this is good, throw it away, and I kept mm-hmm. going through that until I finally got into uh, low key PC gaming, and I got into uh, Boulder's Gate. And that was the first one where I was like, I'm in it and I'm going and I'm going to mm-hmm. go for the long haul because if you're playing Bullers Gate, it's the long haul, no matter what, how far you get, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a long haul. <laughs> and, um, and it was amazing because I got it from the library. I got it from the library at the time. And, uh, I was like, what is this? I'd played like uh, Duke Nukem and stuff like that before, but I've never mm-hmm. actually been through a story. And then I was, then I started really falling in love with RPGs Mm-hmm. At that point, I was like, "Oh, screw all these like actiony games. These are great, but like this one allowed me to ex- to escape, right?" And right. I never had anyone else around me playing games with me. Like I had friends that played games here and there, but I never actually I was the gamer, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, so I didn't have anyone to kind of like say, "Hey, you should get into Physics Four, play Ocarina of Time. You should play more Zelda. You should play this or that, or get into Counter Strike or whatever." I didn't have that, so I went from that, and then. I got an emulator for Super Nintendo because I never played Super Nintendo up to that point. Uh-huh. And then I played Breath of Fire 2. And that was the first time I could actually fall in love with a character hmm. and actually be like, you know what? Like this character and their progress through this actually means something to me. Like nice. when I get to the end, I hope this character, something good happens. And that and Chrono Trigger really kind of like boosted me through oh, that. Right? Chrono Trigger, oh <laughs> right? my god! It, it just kind of it kind of scooped me into that, and then I was, and then unfortunately, like after those, it was so rare. It became more and more rare that I actually cared about the characters as much. Not until like Dragon Age Origins did I really care about the characters. Hmm. And then I got through that, and then it's almost been. I haven't really given like. The Uncharted series, I ha- had a hint of that, you know, but that kind of went away. But I also, my time went away as I got older. Mm-hmm. I had less and less time yeah. to really, like, say, I'm going to finish this game. Final Fantasies and never, like, I played them all, but they never really got me because mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out the plot and yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Uh-huh. Like, 
Kingdom Hearts, same thing. But then I just started getting into like uh, shooters and I started playing like more competitive stuff mm-hmm. and started dealing with more like, you know, trying to improve as a player. So I, I've left the the world of escapism behind me and now I'm going into this other like more skill based thing. And I wonder if that's an age thing. So that with that, Adam, how did your game tastes evolve as you progress through your gaming well, life? <laughs> yeah. Well, early on, it was definitely just the classic platformers. You know, I played a whole lot of Sonic. I played a whole lot of Mario, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, what was it? Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. That Hell was the first yes. time I really played like a, I don't, I don't want to say strategy, but yeah, it's kind of like a strategy puzzly kind of game. Mm. Um, Mostly stuff like that, just whatever was popular at the time, you know, Mortal Kombat, then Street Fighter. Oh, cool. You know, there's fighting games now. This is fun. You can play with your friends. A lot of friend games like that. Mm. Uh, Metal Gear Solid was a big one because that was my first story Metal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was my first, you know, it wasn't, you weren't playing against each other with your friends. You weren't going through levels. You were, you know, playing as this badass character in this hugely realized world with all these crazy characters and story events and oh my mm-hmm. god i can't believe that that guy is actually that guy and all of this kind of stuff <laughs> you know luke i am your father kind of moments things like that i didn't know that was part of games right and it, it was just it to, blew I mean, my mind at fair, the time before metal gear solid it wasn't yeah <laughs> right that, that sort of like big drama we're, we're gonna make it we're gonna take american action movies and japanese anime and smush the concepts together that had never really been done before at, right. at least in big international americanized releases right um metal gear was really the first of its kind to be a truly uh, final fantasy 7 was really cinematic but it's not something you could sit down and, and watch if you weren't playing it Mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid absolutely is. There's actually a yeah. channel on YouTube that just has a guy playing through all of the Metal Gear Solid games. And I totally admit I have watched Metal Gear Solid 3 a <laughs> few times through yeah. because it's it's even so good to just take in. Yeah. Right. People yeah, have made yeah. uh, movie cuts of those games on YouTube where they don't talk over it. They just... They play all right. the cutscenes and they play just enough gameplay to get make sure the cutscenes make sense. Right. They did the first time I've actually watched that was actually a lot later, and that was for uh, The Last of Us, and that mm. is a great watch. Just like yes. no commentary. That's the first thing I ever showed someone, and actually someone got real emotional, and I yeah. like when they were going through it because he had a daughter. Uh-huh. And I won't spoil it if anyone hasn't played it, but he had yeah. a daughter, yeah. and he actually like started tearing up and yeah. actually had to turn it off. Yeah, and it, I'm glad it you, hit him. It hit him really hard. I'm glad you mentioned that big that game yeah. because that was even though that's a pretty recent game, I can't think of a whole lot of games I played before that that really had that strong emotional effect on me. Mm. I, I mean, I, 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 had ex- I had experienced great stories and stuff, but until that game came out, I'm not sure how much of them really affected me. That you know, I felt right. I thought about that game. I still think about that game all the time and the story and how that made me feel. Right. Um, but I guess uh, over time, I got I got into the FPSs like most people do. Mm. You know, played a lot of Call of Duty when that came out. That was cool. You know, Modern Warfare 4, and then Borderlands, stuff like that. And then recently, I've been more... I really love puzzle games. I've gotten so into, <laughs> like, puzzly, art, artsy, you know, The Witness, Talos Principle, stuff like that. Indie platformers, Braid, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm really into like mm-hmm. the artsy games now. <laughs> um, uh, other than that, competitive stuff. I've never really been much of a competitive gamer till Rocket League came out. And I've played that game more than phew, anything on my Steam list <laughs> by far. <laughs> it's not even close. It is so absurdly not close. It's probably unhealthy. <laughs> But that's that's about I, it for me as far as that goes. I, I've actually found that, you know, getting at least recently, I'm playing more games to feel 
accomplishment uh, mm-hmm. than I am to yes. pass time or to escape. Yes. Uh, so, you know, for you guys, it, Rocket League's a perfect example. But mm-hmm. Dota, I fucking hate Dota. I hate the people <laughs> I play with. I hate my teammates. I, I hate the act of firing up the game and knowing that there's just going to be just literal diarrhea of the mouth for, for an hour <laughs> of my life. But, you know, if we win... That's such a feeling of accomplishment. I feel like, holy shit, look at this. We overcame the odds. We totally fucking wrecked those guys. I am awesome. And same, right. same thing, drink again, with Dark Souls, right? It's, <laughs> it's, look, look at what I've overcome. Look at how yeah. accomplished um, you know, I, I am in this digital world. Right. Uh, it's, it's this shittiest, you know, nerdiest thing to say, but there is a real feeling of accomplishment to overcoming yeah. those kind of odds in a video game. Absolutely. Um, I wonder, which I realize I, how sad that sounds. But <laughs> no, it's no, true. no, 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 no. It, it, honestly, it's almost... I've been thinking about that a lot, actually, lately. And it's almost like as you get older, just going through quick accomplishments feel be- feels better than going mm-hmm. through like a long, drawn-out RPG. Because I feel like when you're older, like good things take longer to happen. You know, like yeah. when, you're, when you're doing really good in school, they give you a grade and you did great. You're like, oh, great, I accomplished something. Or, yep. you, you know, you finish a test or you did really good on your, you know, uh, track that day or whatever you know whatever you did mm-hmm. they're really fast they come really fast but now it's like i bought a car like great but now you have to pay it off and you're like and, you, and it takes like <laughs> yeah. takes a long time like I'm, I'm buying a house it takes a long time for all these great things to happen to you you know i'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to advance in a career you right. be there for years just go so like games it's like sometimes like when i feel i think about it i'm like oh you know, these quick accomplishments make me feel good because it's, I can get through them really quick. I can accomplish yeah. something quick, unlike life, which takes forever yeah. to do anything. <laughs> After a long work day, you just need that. I need something to make me feel good sometimes. Right, some days you just give me some accomplishment. But no, that, that's, that's a very important part of gaming. And I think that's what keeps people like us around. That's, yeah, it's huge. I, right. I will, um, I, I will ask you guys, what's, what's the last great game that made you feel something that you played the last game that made me feel something that i played that really hit me uh yeah maybe not the last really, you maybe, had a really good emotional connection to i think i think honestly the last one i played that that got to me not necessarily to the point where i was like in tears or i was like but really like i just felt good about it was uncharted 4 Nice. Um, I, I, it was really nice. I, I, I see Horizon Zero Dawn in there, but I haven't finished it yet. So I, mm-hmm. I'm getting into it. It's great. But Uncharted was great. It, it really struck a chord with me because it was like these people going through this adventure, but it's like they're later in life and they're, they're having like marital issues. They're arguing along the way. You know, it's uh, real simple stuff, but like right. there was no abandonment there. Like she never like gave up on him and he never gave up on her. It was like a guy being an idiot. And that's just like what it's like. <laughs> Guys will fuck up hardcore all the time. So wait a minute. Guy <laughs> being an idiot, married, this sounds like my life. Yeah. I should play no, this. Yeah. I should play that, this. That, that's 100% what it is. He just He's an idiot. He does stupid, selfish things like guys do and she just fucking muscles through it through yeah. the whole thing and a lot of people are not going to be able to relate to that because they're mm-hmm. like they're, they might not tie in with that concept but when you see it and you've been there in a way <laughs> obviously not as an adventurer but you've been there and you see the emotions and it, it really strikes a co- it strikes a chord it's, mm-hmm. you're there you're real you know it's real right i think the the last the last most recent game that gave me an, an emotional impact we actually played for 72 pin connector we did a cast on this uh the walking dead the telltale the walking dead season one um that was a game there i didn't actually like playing like the gameplay was not fun to me i don't really like that kind of thing Mm -hmm. but the story was enough to really impact me there i got pretty sad there for a little while (laughs) some things happened and i was just like oh my god my heart is so heavy i need a break i need i need to step outside somebody give me a hug or something like it was i'm gonna buy some ice cream i don't know it was it was one of those games it was it was very emotional um other than that recently uh i already mentioned the last of us and then i guess soma kinda I wouldn't say emotional as much as introspective and it was kind of philosoph- uh, philosophical in a way, mm-hmm. which 
you know, for people that are really into philosophy, it was probably like philosophy 101 stuff. Oh, yeah, we've heard that before, identity and, right, right, right. you know, that kind of stuff. But that made me think a lot, and it, it, it definitely affected me a lot. I mean, sometimes it's all about the medium, though, right? Because mm-hmm, if someone right. hands you or me, you know, a philosophy 101 textbook, that's not necessarily going to interest us, right? It's not going to make us have the introspection. But if you're playing a game, the, the thing that happens when you're holding the controller, your, your hands on mouse and keyboard, is you are now all of a sudden in that person's shoes. You, you have applied your own persona to that character that you're playing in the game. Mm-hmm. And when that character is faced with these philosophical choices or questions, you naturally apply them to yourself because mm-hmm. that's that's your experience. So I think, especially with philosophy and introspection like that, games can do a much better job than text, movies, songs can, uh, just because you've got that natural inclination to attach yourself to the the character who's you know getting these questions. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I think the the last game I really had an emotional connection to, and I will admit, I sobbed like like a little girl who just got like pushed off a swing set or something. Uh-huh. Was the Mass Effect trilogy because oh. I went through it was it was like 120 hours, 150 hours with mm-hmm. with these characters, with these people. I've I've grown to to like them. They're they're my friends. I've I've my shepherd has confided in them. You know, I we've went on loyalty missions together where I stopped a girl from, you know, killing her father. Like just intense shit. And at the end of the game, I have to watch and I have to make decisions that will absolutely either build these people up before I kill them. Or, or utterly destroy their world because the galaxy is more important. Right. There were actual hard choices in Mass Effect. I, I mean, you know, compared to all other games, right? Not compared to real life or anything like that, but right, for a right, game, right. making mm-hmm. those types of choices where you actually give a shit mm-hmm. was just really impactful. It, it was amazing to see that in a game. And I... That's it's one of the reasons why I had high hopes and low expectations for the next Mass Effect because I don't know of a game who can pull off that act a second time. Uh, right. It was it took a whole lot of work on Bioware's part to build something that was that connected that well. Nice. Well, but we're getting that's, yeah, we're that's get, all I've got. Yeah, we're getting kind of late on here, so if you guys are done, we can move on to some mm-hmm. news topics. Sure. Uh, just just a couple here. We're not going to go too crazy. But this one really caught me off guard. Apparently, Alan Wake is disappearing from Steam after this weekend. Indeed. May 15th is the last time you'll be able to purchase Alan Wake on Steam. And it seems like they're doing 90% off if you buy it over the weekend. So there's still still a chance to play it. You know, after, after it gets pulled from Steam, you can still play the game if you already own it. You're just not going to be able to buy it. And apparently this is because of music licensing issues. Um, yeah, this, this is a weird issue because you'd think something like this wouldn't prevent a game from being sold, but I guess they right. license some music for a specific period of time and right. that contract is ending. So the game's getting pulled off Steam. Yeah. Um, right. Now, I mean, if you've already bought the game, it's still going to be on Steam servers. If you've got it, you know, in your account, you can always re-download it. They're not yanking it from your library. If you delete it, you can always reinstall it. Mm-hmm. So it's just for people who haven't bought the game yet. Um, I don't think this is as big of a deal as it probably should be, given yeah. the implications, because Alan Wake wasn't a hit. Uh, there was a whole mess of things wrong with the game, and it really, really? in my mind, it killed Remedy as a developer. Uh, oh, I really wow. liked Remedy in the Max Payne series, but Alan oh, Wake kind of sunk that ship for me. I didn't know that. I, I haven't played Alan Wake, but I've seen it on a million Steam sales, and I, I heard <laughs> it was a decent game. I, I, have you guys it, played it? It wasn't. No, I have not. It wasn't. Uh, bad it just mm-hmm. wasn't good so um it's it wants to be a you know a, a horror game ish suspense creepy mm-hmm. thing kind of kind of you know twin peaks the game almost okay um where, where something's kind of off but when you see 
when you walk into an area with an enemy, the camera zooms in, you know, past Alan, zooms in right onto the face of the creatures. Like, oh, hey, by the way, they're right here. They're behind this tree. They're going to get you. And then it goes right. back to you. And you're like, that would have scared me. But now I know he's right there. You did the cheesy, stupid shit with the camera. <sighs> I don't right, know exactly right. what I'm expecting. Yeah. And it's not that one time. It's not like a tutorial section. They do that every single time for just about oh, wow. every single enemy. And it absolutely ruins the pacing of the game. It, it instead goes from a horror game to a shitty slow paced action game. Huh. Um, I, I was not a fan. I was not a fan. Well, either way, Alan Wake is on sale 90% off on Steam. If after all of that, you still want to play it, or if you've heard it's good, <laughs> you know, feel free to pick that up. It's your last chance. Otherwise, uh, I guess you have to buy it from somewhere else. Uh, moving on, Mass Effect apparently is on hold. So, yeah. it yeah. would seem as though, uh, you know, after Andromeda, I guess that was what the first part of a new trilogy is that what was initially planned yes yes this was going to be the uh the first in a series of uh three new mass effect games from what we understand um but andromeda was not received well um mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a shame really because the first mass effect also started out really slow andromeda starts out really slow i've heard that you know after the first half of the game things start to open up and it gets better but you know the original release uh before all the patches plagued with animation issues plagued with story issues mm -hmm. um, they had to rework a, a pretty decent chunk of uh, the structure of the game just to make it less bad uh, <laughs> it seems like this is this was really rushed out the door um, right. and it's it's a goddamn shame because I love mm -hmm. Mass Effect but uh, right. EA has said hey Bioware is kind of you know they're, they're going to be doing you know patching and stuff for uh, multiplayer but they're they're really in a holding pattern right now. They're on support duty. Um, mm -hmm. They're they're not going to be doing any more Mass Effect projects for the time being. Which is, I mean, when you hear that for your franchise after mm -hmm. the first game in a brand new trilogy, right? It's not really a good sign. Right. No, I hope well, this doesn't I mean, spell the end. But I mean, I only played. I played one. I played two. I played the crap out of one. Played the crap out of two. But I didn't play three at all because mm -hmm. of the rumors of the ending. Mm -hmm. right the ending being bad and kind of ruining it and then i didn't i'm not going to play this one because of the same reason it's almost like i don't want them to ruin it for me i don't yeah. want i don't yeah. want the people's lives that i went through you know to be any different than in my head canon you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a, a lot like dragon age origins you know there was other resolutions to things but they kind of left you hanging I'd rather them not finish it if they're going to ruin it. You know? yeah, yeah, right. The I, I won't spoil the end of Mass Effect Three, but I will say I wasn't disappointed um, because narratively I don't know what else they could have done to make mm -hmm. me happy. I wouldn't have right. been satisfied with any ending, uh, yeah. and the fact that it, it ends up being a very video gamey ending, I, I get it. I get how that happens. It's not good writing. It's not a good ending, but I understand. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. It, it was. It was the third game is one hundred percent absolutely worth it. But two still remains the high point in the series because okay. in three, you don't have the the chance to get to know your crew members very well because the fate of the galaxy is at stake. So right. You know who cares about so and so's you know stepbrother Bill who's <laughs> about to be executed on some weird alien planet? Right. You don't give a shit. Bill can die because yeah. the whole fate of the galaxy is at stake. Right. right. Um, <laughs> But it does a really nice job of tying everything up, uh, mm. even if the, okay. the actual ending ending is, is kind of shit. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But yeah, Mass Effect on hold. Uh, I really hate to hear that because, you know, it, it, Mass Effect has been a big deal for a long time. And to hear the Andromeda isn't doing that well and then hearing this, uh, hopefully it's not the end of the whole thing. And hopefully they can reel that back somehow. But uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. And if we get more updates on that, we'll definitely hear about it on this podcast. Moving on, this one, uh, this was an interesting one. The GameStop meth pre-order bonus. Totally <laughs> pre-ordering. I know I've been against pre-orders for forever on this show, but uh, as long as GameStop is doing meth pre-order bonuses, yeah. I'm totally signing up. A little, little meth to go with that game. So <laughs> in Tallahassee, um, uh, 
in Florida, this mom was trading in some games for her 11 year old son to buy Grand Theft Auto Five at GameStop, which great A parenting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not exactly an 11 year old game, but um, they traded some games in. Took the game, could, took Grand Theft Auto back home. The kid opens it up and starts flipping through the manual, and there's a little baggie with some stuff in it, and that <laughs> stuff was meth. That nice. stuff was methamphetamine. They called the police. They I, they confirmed that yes, that was meth. So it's the, the the full the full GTA experience. Anybody looking <laughs> to get really addicted? Yeah, no kidding, right? It's so appropriate for it would be GTA of all the games that that would happen in. Right. Yep. So, oh, yeah, if you're looking hilarious. for a little fix with your fix, uh, and you want to have a good time with some games, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe go to GameStop. Maybe that's their final business plan to try uh, to rescue their their. So are you business. guys still doing the pre uh, the uh, meth pre order deal? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're doing we're doing used copies of Fallout Four with Jet. Oh, oh okay, fair enough. So, oh. so you get a little jet canister in, in every copy of Fallout Four. <laughs> fair enough. I like Jesus. That's fine. I guess I'll go with that. <laughs> wow but yeah that was i can't i that is just i'm speechless meth out of a GameStop. that's incredible you'd think that well i guess they're not flipping through the instruction manual but you'd think that someone would be like oh that's a weird bulge in this package yeah, i should right? you know check to see what's in here must not have been that much meth just a yeah just a little meth just <laughs> just a little bit with dinner you know nothing crazy yeah probably Gotta get geared up for the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I think we will we'll leave you with that one for the week. Um, that's about all we have for you. So if you want to check out our other stuff on YouTube, you can look at us at seventy two Pin Connector. We've got you know a couple of we got a hardware review. We're going to do some game reviews. You know, of course, all of our podcasts are on there. Um, if you want to tweet at us, you can do so at seventy two PC Podcast. Let us know what you think. Uh, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, let us know. <laughs> tweet at us. And of course, we have a website as demonstrated on the shirt seventy two pinconnector dot com that has you know all of our podcasts. You can stream them there. You can download them there. You can connect it to an RSS feed. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> and with that, until next week, later, nerds. <laughs> See you, nerds. Game on, everybody. See ya.